Hello my soccer universe, what an incredible and dramatic end to the Bundesliga season in a way that almost always the Bundesliga does somehow deliver but this time it was on three levels and believe me I did not want to wear this jersey of now the 11 time in a row champions Bayern, I was hoping for that jersey over there and to put it bluntly, and I will qualify that a little bit later in, in the video to meet Dortmund bottled that. That was the ultimate bottle job. But they shouldn't feel that sad about themselves because they were not the only ones that bottled it yesterday. There were uh, two more bottle jobs in a rather interesting fashion. So we had three battles going going on and all the games were involved in, in any way, but you could at least... Um, um, section them rather nicely. We had two games that decided the title between uh, Bayern and Dortmund. We had three games that decided, uh, made all decisions about the remaining European spots. And then we had uh, another four games that decided relegation and who goes in the relegation playoffs and so on. And yes, it all went down to, to the wild. All, all could have changed at the last minute. Uh, it was an exhausting day and it seemed so straightforward. And then to top it all off, and I know this maybe should be left for the end of the video, but I actually want to pull pull it with a beginning because we already established the Bayern are the new, the new old champions. Um, the game had just finished. And immediately the news got published that uh, Oliver Kahn and Hassan Salihamidzic are uh, being relieved of their duties on top of the Bayern board. On top of that, Oliver Kahn uh, is claiming that he was not allowed to travel with the team to Cologne. Honestly, this is, I mean, it doesn't come out of left field, but it was all that there will be a board meeting on Tuesday where all this will be decided. No, they held a secret board meeting under the uh, auspices of uh, Uli Hoeneß already before and let go of them in the most ridiculous manner. There was an interview, uh, you know, it really came, it came out like literally within five minutes. Kicker magazine reported that. Uh, and one of the first players that got interviewed was Thomas Müller and then um, within a few <laughs> quest questions uh, they say, and what do you say that now Oliver Kahn has and Salim Hamicic uh, gone? And Thomas Müller was kind of incredulous. I mean, he obviously knew what's going, uh, that, that, that was happening. He said, really? Now? And he said, well, I'm doing my journey. No, I'm not, I, I'm not blaming you. It was like, how could this leak now? An absolute dumpster mess. And I, I really have to say, if Bayern don't get their act together, it might be that this is not that this will go on and they will win a 12th and a 13th. Because everyone is now expected that Bayern are going to uh, come back stronger. And yes, if history is any guidance, yes, this might happen. However, I have a certain feeling that they need to really get their act together. And I mean, on TV and German, German TV, I mean, Didi Hamann, uh, former Bayern player, of course, uh, among other teams, and uh, Bavarian through and through. I mean, he even looks, meanwhile, like a true Bavarian. He was totally incredible. What a mess this club has become. A club that was always for family atmosphere. Uh, you know, there was always this kind of Bayern gene, but you know, you were, you were, if you were good enough and you were welcome, there was always this kind of a little bit of family atmosphere around this club that has now been dissolved. And I mean, the ru ru rumors are that especially the figure Oliver Kahn was not very well liked, not only between the dressing, uh, in, within the dressing room, but also within the staff, that there was a lot of unrest going on. The sporting side this year did not go well at all. Bayern invested so much and got actually so little because, let's face it, the championship should be a given with this squad. And then also the dressing room was not very happy that they didn't receive the protection that they got, for instance, under Karl-Heinz Rummenigge, uh, where he just put himself in front of the dressing room. No, 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 what's even worse, they actually blamed the Nagelsmann exit on the lacking um, connection between the dressing room and the players when uh, both Josu Kimmich and Leon Goretzka came out afterwards that this was one of the best coaches we ever had. 
And of course, I don't know, this is so anticlimactic to talk about it now. I mean, at the, at the moment, it's not even sure whether Thomas Tuchel uh, is really going to continue pro problem. He will stay in charge. But, you know, his resume was not the greatest. Let's put it that way. What he did in Bayern, he did not improve things. To be fair, it was not his squad. He didn't get any preparation in. And I think there was so many messes going on that this is a Bayern team. Yeah, it's not good. Uh, I'm, well, I'm, well, I mean, on the other side, there's Dortmund. And we have talked way too much about Bayern now. But on the other side, there's Dortmund, where there's complete emptiness. And, you know, there will be celebrations today in Munich after a press conference explaining why the two got fired and then there will be a small celebration on in downtown munich maybe the women's team get also a championship so they can celebrate together in in in, in a way but if 10,000 show up that will be a lot in dortmund there were not only over 80,000 in the stadium there were hundreds of thousands around the stadium the party was there they lifted the fans. I mean, on the run out, it was an atmosphere like they already had won. And I think this got to Dortmund, who are just, in a way, a way too emotional team. And yes, Jude Bellingham, who probably is the spark behind Dortmund, he could not play. Which I think was a big, big downside for this Dortmund team. Uh, but the emptiness afterwards, and that was a chance it really feels like this was the one chance and it did not work and you completely bottled it when people say did arsenal ball no Ar arsenal got overtaken by a team that was just way better and kicked into the next gear this was a title stumble it was not a title race and dortmund had multiple chances to get ahead of bayern however for me the statistic of the evening is Four times this season, Dortmund were in first place. Four times this season, they played as the leader of the Bundesliga. Four times they did not win. That, to me, is the ultimate ball drop. And I'm sorry, sorry to say, I really wanted Dortmund to win that. Really, really wanted, wanted Dortmund because I'm tired of Bayern winning this one. And especially in that way where even in the press conference, uh, Thomas, Thomas Tuchel said... You know, I would have felt more responsible for uh, the failure than I feel now responsible for the success. Thomas Müller agreed that this is a title that he doesn't know how deserved that title is. It's, it's staggering. It's absolutely sta staggering what was happening yesterday. Uh, it is... It, some credit has to go, and I know as a fan, this must feel so frustrating. I've been there. Both Dortmund and Bayern play against teams that have nothing to play for, but they play full on. Big credit to the German Bundesliga for that. That it's not a given. It's not like in Italy where you walk out, or it used to be in Italy at least, where you walk out and you get that. No, it's not. Uh, and that's a huge credit to the Bundesliga itself. But I think Dortmund really have to look at themselves very very hard uh, how can you have let that slip because it was right there for you to, for, for, for for taking but it was like the hot potato that uh, no one wants to have the hot potato in the end it ends up where it was before man 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 okay now we have talked about the fallout. Let's talk about how this all happened and we gonna I'm gonna do it it was kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of parallel. Um, the first 25 minutes, like everything that could go wrong for uh, Dortmund went wrong. You started out well, you created a few chances, but you know, there was some nervous energy, still the crowd very much behind you. Then uh, Kern actually played it quite well, but um, a brilliant shot by Kingsley Coman gives Bayern the lead and that's exactly what Bayern was hoping that they get the lead and there will then be the pressure on Bayern and now comes the, the, the tipping point here is that in Dortmund itself there were no announcements however the fans are on their phones they are very well aware of what's going on so the atmosphere got a little bit more nervy 
And then a Fernandes corner, corner is in is put in by Hansi Olsen at the near corner where I have to, have to say Goldie Cobra did not look good there because he's right there. This is a goal that cannot go in from a dead ball situation. But you can get the big boost. You get a, a I think it was a hands pen, pen, pen penalty. Sebastian Allaire takes the ball away from Emre Can, who had been a rather secure penalty taker. But you know, it's the great story. Sebastian Allaire, who got them the win in Augsburg, who put them through, who uh, had this, you know, came as a cancer survivor into that. Takes a penalty and it's saved. It was a horribly taken penalty. And then to add insult to injury, on Karim Onisivo, one of the two contributors uh, from Austria in this title, the title race, makes it 2-0. On top of that, many chances. Uh, you know, he, I think Onisivo hit even the uh, woodwork at one point. Then Adeyemi has to come off. Marco Reus comes on. And I think most people were actually thinking of Marco Reus on this one because this is the guy who came to Dortmund after they won two title titles in a row who missed the World Cup, always the nearly man. Nearly man again. The first break came when a Leroy Sané goal, a uh, really nice taken goal to boot, uh, was taken off because of a handball when he gets the uh, the ball uh, kind of midfieldish and then he runs, the ball touches his hand and it cannot, it, it, it doesn't count for that. That was a big let off because if Bayern win 2 0, and Dortmund are 2 0 down. That takes out all the tension, but that kept the tension a little, little bit on because you had still two. Dortmund could potentially turn turn this around, and I, all, I had the feeling that this might happen still. And Bayern, uh, with one goal, you know, they have been throwing away stuff. And Kern threw everything at Bayern. They literally threw every, everything at Bayern. There were a few saves, there were misses in, in, in there. I think the woodwork was hit. Uh, it was not easy for Bayern, and I have to say, the few scenes, it was especially in the first half, it was still 1-0. There was, there was a scene where you could see that Bayern, they want to stay back, they want to stay defensive with that. They didn't really attack out, and Köln uh, did not know really what to do with that as well. So it was really, really a weird situation, and that continued. The Bayern actually wanted to keep it safe, but then they got a little bit too much pressed in on the second half. Um, as I said, Mainz still had chances. However, Rafa Guerrero, after there were a few more misses by Dortmund, they just have to go in. Uh, Guerrero makes it one to it at a stage where Dortmund was really putting loads of pressure on. And you think with this 1-2, now it might fall uh, Dortmund's way, but it didn't really in that game. There was a header from Hummels that uh, was just uh, going outside. Uh, but nothing really uh, where you could hang your head on in a way. However, then the big thing is that uh, Hans penalty, I think it was Gnabry was uh, giving away. And again, Hans is giving away and then Ljubicic converts for Köln. 1-1. One, one. And the scenes were crazy because there were Dortmund fans in the stadium in Köln as well. There was even a big yellow-black banner being waved around in the fan block of Köln. Most people wanted, most people in Köln wanted Dortmund to win this title. And you saw that it was, it was so funny because there were many white and red jerseys, but there was the occasional yellow blob and there was no yellow team on that uh, field. It was very, it was a very, very, very surreal scene in that sense. It is 1-1 one, one and everything exploded, even in the Westfalen Stadion. It all exploded there. Everyone knew, yes, Bayern might uh, lose this one again. But they didn't. There was a chance by Leroy Sané, who got on the ball running through. Uh, it is cleared by Goli Schwebe. However, uh, the ball is then put out and it comes back again by Gnabry to Musiala, who brilliantly takes it on. Uh, and makes a brilliant shot to make it 2-1 for Bayern. And at that moment, um, you knew that this was Bayern is going to win that one. And now Dortmund have to score two in a space of five minutes. And I was hoping for an Aguero finish. It did not happen. Süle, brilliant goal in the 96th minute. But then they only got one cross in. And that was that. And the title was done. Title celebrations were happening with the copy of the trophy. 
in Cologne, the crowd booed the crap out of Bayern Munich right there. No one will one, 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 one see them. However, uh, to be fair, um, I mean, I, I would not have expected much from that. But to be fair, the Bayern players then also took part in saying goodbye to former uh, Cologne, uh, retiring Cologne players with Timo Horn and Jonas Hector, uh, which I think was also nice uh, to see. I also found it that Thomas Müller gave the throw the copy of the trophy to uh, the actual ultras there who then were waving it around. So yeah, kind of saying, you know, we didn't really deserve that. This was all the players. Uh, they, 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 this is for, for the fans, it's not, not for us. I mean, it, it was really uh, that vibe overall. An incredible end to an inc incredible season. However, it was more a stumble than anything else. Let's focus on the relegation battle because there were also a few interesting things. But here, I, I don't want to go parallel one by one. I mean, first of all, Gladbach, beautiful New Jersey, to be honest, uh, had it relatively easy against Augsburg, who just didn't show up and who were lucky to only lose 2 0. Uh, in the first half, this could have been already 5 or 6. Uh, it was Nets and Hoffman who scored the goals. And then uh, Gumni is sent off after he had given away what seemed to be a penalty, but it was outside, so it was last man. And then um, he gets red. That put Augsburg already in trouble because uh, they were not safe yet. Then Bochum also profited from a rare red card to Adli. Stupid. Just kicking a player when the ball is far away uh, and it was decided on VAR. So that was really not going going well. And then uh, Bochum just had the lift and Leverkusen didn't really have it. And they scored two goals through first and Asano. Uh, putting loads of pressure on at the other bad battlegrounds because uh, everyone was kind of everyone of the other teams were kind kind of hoping that Lever Leverkusen will do a job in Bochum. No, it was not hap happening. So first Asano, the ones, and then Kevin Stöger lay, lay down Bochum, put themselves in a really 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 good position thanks to that uh, safe. Then we go to Leipzig, where also it seemed to be safe for, for a while with Lyman and Kunku scoring two quick goals. However, Kaminski pulls one back for Schal Sch Schalke and then the freak own goal, uh, one of the most bizarre goals that you will ever see. Uh, Willy Orban own goal, it will go down eventually, but if you can see, watch the, hi the highlights. Uh, gives Schalke a 2-2 and Schalke have this fight back quality -qual at that point. They knew if we get a win, we get at least relegation. Because the other results weren't going their way. However, uh, in their push, it was a little bit too, too little. Um, and then Yusuf Paulsen and Kunku scored two more. And Kunku's two goals actually mean that he will join. Um, he was joined top scorer of the league together with Niklas Füllkrug from uh, Werder Bremen. And then Stuttgart. All they needed to do is get a win and they're safe. And it was exactly this day. This was one of the other ball bottles just because it was so timid in a way. What they played play the first half. Then they knew they needed to get the win because Bochum had the the win. They could actually push Augsburg into relegation. A draw will set them in, 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 in into the relegation spot. They also knew that Schalke might come back. So there was pressure on. And they had plenty of chances, especially in the second half. First, first half, there was only one by Girasi. Second half, plenty of chances to make it. And then with the only shot on goal, Bebu gives Hoffenheim the lead. Completely deflating. Then Thomas after an endo assist, gets an equalizer five minutes later, and then it was all the push. All you needed was to get that win. They cannot manage to get that win, and Stuttgart finishes 16th, which means they have they now have, have to play in the relegation. Playoffs, which the last time they played in four years ago, meant that Union Berlin got promoted. And this is also the next one where we go uh, between Union Berlin and Werder Bremen. Uh, Union Berlin also needed on, only win to secure a sensational Champions League berth. They got it in the end. But it was not easy because over in Frankfurt, Freiburg were, were, were playing. And Freiburg played better in the first half and got a go ahead head goal through Vincenzo Grifo in the 45th minute. Where uh, for Union Berlin there was a penalty call at one point uh, that was rightfully take, 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 taken away. But they also created chances, but it did not really seem to work. And for Werder it was only get Niklas Wilkog another goal that he is the lone top scorer for sure. With uh, uh, at least 16 if not more 
he had six six goals and then he uh, he, he he would have had more um so Verat had only that goal to play for um but nothing really happened and with the Grifo goal i mean the players even uh admitted we knew that however in the end rami kedira gets the goal it was actually a nice shot as well and they see that one out and it's it's a true fairy tale four years ago they got promoted everyone thought they will go down immediately again they managed to stay in then they make it the next year to the conference league the next year they make it to the europa league and now they make it to the champions league only in berlin is probably the best story in germany at the moment and that is not a team that you would say is like the model team or the big team for berlin that actually would be helped them more than in just a little bit with that one nil Frankfurt then actually managed to turn that game around and that was actually huge for them as well because they were still fighting for Euro, Euro for European spots. Kolomiani gets an equalizer in the 80, 83rd minute. Freiburg was more or less out of it. Um, and then Ebimbe in stoppage time gets the win for Oliver Glasner in Oliver Glasner's last home game. Meaning that if Wolfsburg managed to lose... Frankfurt has European spots secured and that's exactly what happened and a little bit of nowhere of course Kaminska in the second minute gave Wolfsburg the lead Wolfsburg were much better in the first, first half but for some reason already relegated Hertha pulls out a win they say goodbye to the Bundesliga in a dramatic uh, in, in, in no, 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 not in proper fashion uh, giving it also their all and Wolfsburg bottled it because they if they get a win they are in Europe no they lose it and they have no chance for Europe. So after all this drama and all these twists and turns and you know, believe me, it's not done yet. We have this final table. We already know who champions. We have Leipzig and Union Berlin are in the uh, Champions League. We have Freiburg for sure in the Europa League. Uh, Leverkusen and Frankfurt is not quite clear yet because there's a cup final between Frankfurt and Leipzig. Frankfurt wins that one. Leverkusen uh, will go into the Conference League. Um, if uh, Leipzig win that one, Le Leverkusen goes to Europa League. It's that simple. But it's between those two. Uh, we see on the bottom, Bochum salvage themselves. Augsburg, 34 points. Uh, just survived because Hoffheim got the point of Stuttgart, who now have to go in the relegation playoffs, and Schalke are out. And down, fifth time rally relegated in the club's his, 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 his history. Amazing second half of the season, but in the first half they only got nine points. This is why they got relegated. This is also why Borussia Dortmund did not become the champions, because they were sixth place starting this year. That, that is the true story here, that it was all done in the first half of, of the season. And so both Ruhrpott Giants are down and out, and the only one is from that region that is really celebrating is, of course, Bochum. The smallest of these teams uh, if, if you look over at the adjusted standings of course um, it tells the story Bayern underperformed Dortmund slightly overperformed they finish level on points it's goal difference that made the difference Union Berlin and Freiburg the best stories of the season with Köln and Stuttgart definitely also more underperformers and Leverkusen uh, also um, we still are not done with the season. As I said, we have relegation playoffs. Stuttgart will play on the 1st of June at home against either Heidenheim or Hamburg. Hamburg at the moment more likely because they sit in third place. One point behind Heidenheim. This will be decided uh, early on Sunday. Uh, who of the two will be? Personally, I would like more Heidenheim than Hamburg because I want Hamburg to be in the Bundesliga next season as well because they definitely are a team that would deserve to go there. It would, however, be a barnstormer like la, la, last year. Whoever it is, I really hope that Stuttgart will survive this one. But, you know, we have to see. And then we also have the German Cup final on Saturday. So, and then after that, the playoffs will, will be decided between Leipzig and Frankfurt. Uh, it's going to be an interesting one. I think this is a wide open one. Because Frankfurt, ever since there was clarity about the future, and by the way, Frankfurt's sporting manager, Grösche, who basically now had Glasner sacked, he is in serious consideration to take over the job at Bayern. That would be another twist in another messy thing. So, I managed to put Bayern in at the end as well. Let me know in the comments what you thought uh, about this finish to the Bundesliga. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. We'll talk about these final games um, 
in next week together with everything that happened in Austria. But that league is more or less decided. I'm going to enjoy a last game this evening, the last home home game. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!